Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings, my friend. Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday here on Bible Tract Echoes. That's the title we give to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Now, just in case you have not been listening very long, we usually study through a book of the Bible, and we are doing that right now. On Monday, we began a look at the book of Leviticus. And believe it or not, you're going to enjoy the study. It's far more interesting than you thought, and we are going to make some really good applications there. But it's Tuesday, and we use our Tuesday broadcast to challenge each other, especially those who know Jesus Christ as Savior. We challenge each other to become sharper, to become more effective in communicating the gospel of Jesus Christ and in the effort of giving more people the gospel by using the tool called a gospel tract. I want to encourage you to get some gospel tracts from us. By the way, do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Recently, I was speaking in California, and while I was there, I had the joy of meeting with some folk who support Bible tracts on a monthly basis. And one of our friends, there gave me a book that was published right about in 1900. It was a book which compiled over 100 gospel tracts, all of them written either in the 1700s or 1800s. It was a great treasure for me to get. Now, would you like to hear a gospel tract from the 1800s? I think you're going to enjoy it. Oh, in the book are also some, a number of small, short stories and sayings. Here's one of them. It says this, a ship's captain was once asked if he knew where all the rocks were along the shoreline. He answered, no, it's not necessary to know where all the rocks are, only to know the safe channel, end quote. Oh, friend, that's true about the false religions that are out there. We don't need to know all about them. What we do need to know is the safety of God's salvation through Jesus Christ and how to tell it to other people. If we know the truth, we can declare the truth and it will clarify other things and show them to be right or wrong. If your Bible's there in front of you, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. In a moment, I'm going to read the opening three verses of Hebrews chapter 2. It's going to be a good day. I'm glad you're with us. Stay tuned. I talked about gospel tracts here a moment ago. Before I talk about a track written in the 1800s, let me talk about a track that I want to put into your hand. It's one that we publish here at Bible Tracks Incorporated. This one's entitled, Are You Afraid? Are You Afraid? It's a written track for children, older elementary age kiddos. We want to share with them the gospel. If you work with children, if you have children, you have grandbabies, if you have kids next door to you that don't go to church, and so many kids are not taken to church anymore, if you're looking to impact children, here is a gospel tool called Are You Afraid? And we titled that because we're told by so many people who work with kids that kids these days are afraid of a lot of things, of strangers and death and animals, their parents getting divorced, storms, and so on. This gospel track confronts that using a very well-known verse out of Isaiah 41, which says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. This track explains that verse in kiddo language. 
telling them that there is hope and they need not fear because there is one, the great God, the creator God, who loves them and will be with them. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Here is a great tool to share the gospel and meet great needs in kids' lives. Are you afraid? At the end of the program, my announcer is going to be giving three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Have pen and paper ready. Would you jot down the method that works for you? Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracts in English. There's over 40 tracts there. This one, Are You Afraid, will be in there. Please do that. Let's become partners in giving out the gospel, not just to children, but to all people. And you can just go to our website as well, which is BibleTracksInc.org. And that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. Or do that today, please do it today. Well, Hebrews chapter two, beginning uh, at verse one says this, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Oh, friend, how should we escape? It's a great gospel day. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 says this, Now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. There really is some debate among good and godly people who love to tell the gospel concerning just how much pressure we ought to put on a lost person to receive Christ. For me personally, I really try to stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit's prompting in this matter. Some Sometimes the Spirit urges me and prompts me to push the lost person for a decision right then. Other times, I'm not prompted to push. But right now, to that goal, let me share with you part of a gospel track from the 1800s. There was a man named Webb who was well known in that day as a great swimmer and a fearless man. He wasn't afraid of anything. He had already swam across the, the English Channel. But one day he was in the United States and looking at the boiling current right there at the cleft of the Niagara Falls. Well, determined to risk his life for fame, and he was a risk taker, even though he was strongly being warned not to test those waters there in the Niagara River, he said, I'm quoting now, it's all luck. And in the end, I don't think about the dangers. I'm going to take my chances. That's what he said. He did not know it would be his last day to take chances. He jumped into the angry, whirling waters and began to float along the Niagara River. Soon, though, he became like a mere straw in the grasp of the river. He was powerless as the river pushed him into the mad vortex, which he had so foolishly braved. Thousands of people stood safely on the shorelines. They were near to him. Oh, but they were safe, but they were powerless to help Mr. Webb. On the shoreline, there is a rock that's identified with this title, Past Redemption's Point. It's the place from which no swimmer or boater had ever been known to be saved. On one side of that rock was life and hope and salvation. On the other side, death, despair, and damnation, destruction. And those two conditions, so far apart, were only a little way apart there on the Niagara River. I think you already realize that Mr. Webb lost his life that day as thousands of people watched. He knew the dangers but thought he lived a charmed life. He had gone past redemption's point. That gospel track from the 1800s goes on to say, I have summarized it so far, but let me read you word for word near the end of this track. It says this, in the ever-flowing streams of life, we are daily drawing nearer the point whence no traveler returns, and we know not how soon we may drift, half-dreaming past redemption. 
that whisper in the heart today of a Bible verse learned at our mother's knee, that wonderful preservation in a moment of intense danger, that day you stood by an open grave and looked into its unfathomed mysteries, and that illness that drew you so near to salvation and near to the kingdom of God, yet not inside. Oh, who shall say when God's voice will plead with you for the last time? Can you tell if these circumstances shall be the past redemption point of your life? God says, my spirit shall not always strive with men. The Bible says, quench not the spirit. The author of this tract goes on to say this, I recollect reading of one who was greatly interested in the welfare of her soul. Earthly interest supervened. Again and again, the Spirit of God worked in her. Again and again, she trifled and she smothered the still, small voice of God. At last, though, things came to a climax and she did not yield. And from that day, she never had a desire for holy things again, although she lived 20 more years years. This gospel track ends with this Bible verse out of Luke chapter 19. It's verse 42. The verse comes from the Passion Week of Christ. Jesus has entered into Jerusalem. Jesus is teaching. He's being challenged. He's there to give his life a ransom. Jesus goes out and he looks over the city of Jerusalem. And you know what he says? Luke 19, 42, we have his words. He said this of the city, If thou knewest, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things that belong to thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes, end quote. Jesus had come. The book of John says this, Jesus came unto his own, the Jewish people. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. I'm glad for what the rest of the verse says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. But Jesus, that day, Luke 19, he is weeping. He's weeping over Jerusalem because he came to be their savior. He came, yes, to be their king, but first he had to deal with the sin issue. He came to be their savior, to give his life, to die in Calvary, shed his blood, to be the ultimate once and for all Passover lamb but they would not receive him. Oh, some did, but the nation as the vast whole said, no, we will not have this man to be king. Crucify him, they said. Jesus said that he had come to offer them peace, but they had pushed it away. They had postponed the day. And now verse 42 ends with these words, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Oh, friend, if God has been prompting in your heart to receive Jesus as your Savior and you've been pushing him away, the day may come. Maybe today is going to be that day for you in which God will no longer move in your soul, no longer prompt your heart about receiving him, and he will hide from your eyes, the eyes of your understanding, that you're a sinner and you need Jesus as your Savior. Oh, friend, if God has spoken to your heart, God has brought things back to your soul and mind that you learned from your mom or grandmom or somebody telling you of your need of Christ. Receive him today. Today is the day of salvation. It may be the last opportunity you have. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.